equipment's going in Ukraine. We do know that when uh, the Ukraine military uh, has caused Russians to drop their equipment and flee, ready for this, some of the equipment they dropped was made in the United States. How did they get it? They either got it from us sending it to the wrong people or they captured it from the Ukraines and knew how to use it. They were using it back uh, against the Ukraines. Did Congress declare war? No. Did Congress authorize boots on the ground? No. Do we have troops there? Yes, we do. We're out of uniform, which allows old Joe to say we don't have boots on the ground. Are we shooting at Russians? We are. We have military in Poland picking targets in Russia, operating American military equipment in Ukraine and pulling the trigger in Poland. The people pulling the trigger have a uniform on, United States Army. The, the people finding the targets do not have a uniform on, but the US Army finding the targets. That's American boys killing Russian boys. What's the definition of that? It's not good. Yeah. So, so it's like That's a semantics game where it's like, oh, well, you know, as long as he wasn't in uniform, he's acting on his own or or under the Polish government or, or something like that. But th those of us with our eyes open can see that th this is really a war Joe's between gonna, NATO we're gonna and, get and nuked. Putin and Ukraine just happens to be in the middle. Yes, it's getting, I think, personalized between uh, Joe Biden and Putin. And I got to tell you. I have nothing against Joe Biden. I happen to know him personally, and I like him. But the Joe Biden that See? I know and like... Bias. I'm on bias. Like I like years ago, hear both sides. That was the Irish Catholic, beer-drinking, <laughs> mass-attending, pro-life, Scoop Jackson, JFK, middle-of-the-road, moderate, constitution-respecting Joe Biden. Now he's been tugged so far to the left, he's barely uh, recognizable. We actually sat with each other... I'm not sure where you are, but in the East Coast of the United States, we have a high-speed train called the Acela, which goes from Boston to New York, New York to D.C. Joe mm -hmm. Biden took that train every day. It's the last leg of it from Wilmington to D.C. I took it from New York to D.C. a couple times a month when uh, my former employer, Fox, sent me to D.C. And invariably, I ended up on the train with him. And when I did, uh, we sat next to each other. We also taught together at Delaware Law School. I was full-time. He was an adjunct. This is a good uh, this show. Is in the Reagan years, so back in the uh, in the seventies. We're watching it Hello together. Nice guy, great personality, wonderful human being. Not the same person that's in the White House today. The person that's in uh, the White House today is tugged hard to the left, uh, and is a ferocious advocate of war. As are many Republicans uh, and, right. and Democrats. Both parties. Both. Well, I claim there's one party in government, the big government party. Both wings of the big government party, Democrat and Republican, love war. Getting the truth here. In power. It certainly enriches their benefactors in the military, industrial, banking complex. Yeah. Forgive me, President Eisenhower, I'm adding another word to your phrase. I'm looking <laughs> up to heaven or wherever Ike is. <laughs> Oh, th this has been uh, really helpful. Now, I can't remember. I think it was Senator Bernie Sanders over the weekend said that he was actually shocked that Biden behaved so much more like a progressive than a moderate. That that really shocked him. And I'm sure, like you, he's known him for decades. Well, he's behaved like a uh, progressive on domestic policy. He's behaved like Lindsey Graham would if he were in the White House or John McCain. Um, on foreign policy, I mean, the attack on Nord Stream was a criminal act. It was an act of war against an ally, and it violated a treaty, the, the uh, NATO treaty. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's okay, right? From the dawn of the Is that CIA, okay? Which, in my view, shouldn't exist. Back to Harry Truman now. American presidents have all used the CIA as a private army, but none, as far as I know, has used it on an ally until Joe Biden. Um, why haven't we heard a peep out of Germany on this? Where is the mainstream press? Where is Bernie Sanders? Where is Rand Paul? Where are the anti My grandfather fought in, in World War II. Not he was the head Sanders MVP at West Point. He doesn't make things up. He's 88 years old. And this is the crown jewel uh, of his investigative uh, reporting. Or they're embarrassed that Cy Bigfooted the billion dollars uh, uh, big media 
in the German government and came out with a truth that embarrassed them. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what's happened is if they admit to it, then they've triggered a war with Putin. And if they admit to it, then they betrayed Germany, a NATO partner, one of the big, you know, one of the big seven. Um, and so I, I think they will do their best to go to their grave with this story because it's so damaging. But the evidence, as I read through um, Sai's report, I just don't see what other story could be that probable. Um, and Occam's razor this tells is, me, uh, you know, this is probably the simplest explanation. It is. Not yes. good. One, one last question, and then I'll let Not you go. Good, I know people. how busy you are. I really appreciate you uh, taking time away um, from, from your podcast and your day. But that's our uh, current you know, admin. you and I speak with Colonel McGregor. We speak. Uh, I'm hoping to get Scott Ritter on my show here in the next two weeks. Um, you, I, they are painting a very different picture of this Ukraine war. I have been uh, harassed online for telling the truth um, about this being a NATO versus Russia war. Does Ukraine have any chance of winning this war? And who do you think ultimately wants to keep this battle going? I, I don't think that it's Zelensky. It's all about money. Well, the first question uh, is, they the need to make to money. Colonel McGregor and, they, and Scott they, Ritter, uh, create a war. The no, they don't have a chance. Uh, the, Us. the Russian strength will the overwhelm terrorists. them. I mean, Russia's about to introduce between create a war. 500,000 uh, new troops to the theater. For the money. They will simply overwhelm uh, Ukraine and then we and get paid American, to be uh, advisors. The who rescuer going, NATO does. Poland, who comes Italy, in uh, and uh, defends NATO said country. Enemy, he must be driven it's a, it's so a he money racketeering. To the point where he's no longer it's quite popular. sad. Read, uh, what's going on in Russia? Putin's popularity is up into the 80s, 80%. Look, he may be a butcher. I don't know. Uh, uh, he probably is a butcher. But this is not a, a battle in which we have, not a fight in which we have a dog. Uh, what do we care about the outcome? We don't ever want to go to this war with Russia. This part of the world has been in dispute between Ukraine or and China. Russia since before the United States was a country. If we're going to go around the world looking for monsters to slay, there will be no end to our search. That's right. And when we do that, we don't export democracy we, or, or freedom. We export violence. It's not what we're about. Well, we should have learned that from the two world wars. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, well, well said. We're, we're not two. exporting democracy. We're exporting violence. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. If people want to hear wow. you on a more regular basis, what is the best way to do that? The best way to find me is uh, Judging Freedom on YouTube. You can go to my website, Judge Knapp, where you'll see all of my columns. There's 10 years worth of columns there and a lot of other interesting things, as well as... He's a judge. Um, he taught as well as judging. Judges. Freedom. Uh, my to be judge. <laughs> teases of it on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. You know what uh, I mean. The full episodes uh, are uh, on YouTube, uh, and we produce these every day. Right. I know I'm going to be uh, so much, Judge, for coming on. Finding really uh, his channel, Judge Freedom. Sounds like a good uh, YouTube channel to me. So now you know what I'm about uh i am my grandfather's granddaughter which was robert townsend my mom is sandra townsend and her father is joe townsend and he is robert's grandson um Robert being Robert Townsend of uh, Samuel Cooper spy ring for George Washington. And uh, what we know about him, because my mom and I went up to Rayham Hall and to get it from the historians up there, because the whole, he's the founding, well, his father is the founding father, which was Samuel Townsend. And uh, he uh, was the founding father of Oyster Bay, New York. 
and uh, he was the magistrate. Um, he ran the whole town. So most of the town is Townsend's up there. And uh, it was it was really cool to like, like my mind was blown as soon as I watched um, on Netflix, like I had said previously, uh, and uh, found out who <laughs> our grandfather is. It was super exciting. Then I said, we're going on a road trip. And my mom's like, to where? And I'm like, New York, of course. And she goes, we can't do that in a day. And I said, yes, we can. <laughs> so, you know, it took us uh, four hours because we got stuck in traffic to get up there. So worth it. Literally made it. And I'm not kidding. Five minutes before, you know, give or take a minute. Um, five o'clock. They closed at five. And Claire, um, God bless her, uh, who takes the train into... New York and has to leave by five so she can catch the train and get home at a certain time. And I respect that. Um, she was kind enough to stay after, uh, leave it open just for us, give us a personal tour, um, which was really cool. Uh, I have pictures. I can share some of them. Um, and, uh, so what we know, so what they have told us, the historians up there that have researched us for ever, um, you know, they have, uh, the town now manages the home and they make money through, um, the museum. So if you're ever in Oyster Bay, New York, uh, and you'd like to check it out, it's, uh, really uh, quite interesting because it, uh, you step back in time, um, you're on battleground that was part of, um, the Revolutionary War. Um, they had, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry, we'll rewind. Um, so, uh, you know, Samuel, uh, or Solomon, uh, coming over here and, um, Samuel Solomon, uh, coming over here from England and uh, bringing his wife and his son uh, over. They only had one child. Um, a lot of only children in our family. I'm one. <laughs> um, so, like, bringing his child over, he was an upstanding. You know, he went to Harvard uh, to become a judge. And um, he became a very good what would be an American citizen, what they wanted back in those days, um, is they were under, uh, the King's, uh, rules and, uh, they were run like England, basically the 13 colonies were run like England and they were fine with that because they were loyalists. They were true and tried to, um, their heritage and their, um, Sorry, I'm going to turn on my light. It's getting dark. Ooh. Um, so they uh, were loyalists and they were very true to England. They were very loyalists meant you were loyal to England. You, you um, were sworn in as a loyalist. You had to swear yourself in and pledge to bow down to the king or queen, whoever was in charge over in England. And it was a king at that time. So, um, and, and then Robert, as he grew up, he was young in his twenties and he had, um, an inn that he had a couple rooms that he rented and, um, he would only serve loyalists. He would only serve Englishmen and specifically military. So he was, he was very military, but he didn't want to join the military, obviously. He was a writer um, by trade. That's what he also read a lot and wrote um, and had beautiful handwriting. And uh, so that's what he did. So he would go over back and forth to England to get goods. And upon one time going over to England and um, getting some goods for his inn that he served uh beer and liquor i believe and wine you know stuff like that and some a couple of things to, and food and then some rooms only to 
loyalists. If you were English and were loyalists, you know, if you were English and you were sworn in as American, no. Mm -mm. No. And there was people that were, they called them militants. They were like sworn in as, they were trying to separate from England and become their own country is what they were trying to do. And we all know that from history. And those who don't, this is a little bit of a history uh, lesson. They were trying us, um, the uh, people of America, they didn't like being under the English. It was very controlled. Um, they didn't care about their constituents. Uh, they just cared about taxing them and um, getting money. They were, they were greedy, plain and simple. I'm not going to put it any other way than that. Um, so Robert had come back and they had taken over the towns and homestead and up on the hill where the graveyard is, that was where the, um, I call him, <laughs> it's Captain Simcoe. Simcoe, I call him. I don't like Simcoe. Um, he's mean. Uh, he had taken over um, the homestead and built, um, a bunker for them to shoot any, uh, anybody who wasn't sworn in as a loyalist, basically. Um, cause that would make you a communist. Um, uh, so he came back and his father, they burnt the barn they killed animals, and my grandfather was very much an animal lover. Um, and uh, they, yeah, and they hit his dad, and his dad had, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. His dad had um, a black eye, and uh, it didn't take kindly to Robert at all. That actually really pissed him off. And um, that's when... Uh, his one friend who, uh, Woodward, and he was good friends with Woodward because Woodward was an Englishman, and uh, he pretended to be a loyalist. His father was also a judge, and he was also friends. His father was friends with Robert's father, Samuel, and uh, so. He, I'm sorry for crying. It gets, it's family, so. So, uh, yeah. So that infuriated him. And that's when he decided to go undercover and help Woodward. Woodward was, um, married and had children, young children. And he had gotten... Uh, caught, unfortunately, way too many times. And his father got him off three times. And then his father walked away after the third time and said, you're on your own. You get caught again. I'm not saving you from being hung. Because if you were um, caught, you were put what was called on, um, a, it was a, called jail. But it was really um, a death ship because you didn't survive. You starved and there was nothing but disease uh, ridden. It was gross. Um, so that's where my grandfather uh, became a spy is uh, then. And his sister, he had, um, I'm sorry, he was not an only child. I forgot about Sally. How could I forget about Sarah? So um, he had a sister, Sarah Townsend, and he had a brother, Samuel. Uh, how could I forget about them? I'm such an idiot. I'm having an off day today. I have some autoimmune uh, issues, and um, I was getting uh, better. I was going into remission, and... Uh, Today was a little bit stressful, and it kind of threw me for a loop. So uh, I'm just having an off day. Could have been something I ate. <sighs> Who knows? Uh, I made homemade wedding soup, and that might have been it. 
but so back to uh, my grandfather and my great uncle and my great aunt and I'm so sorry so uh Captain Solomon uh is is uh it's Solomon Townsend and he's the famous uh sea captain Captain Solomon that's Robert's older brother and then uh his younger sister uh is Sarah aka Sally that was her spy name she was the only teenage spy and they uh she was captured and uh she was pregnant by um Simco now you know why I don't like him at all he got my aunt pregnant and um didn't save her uh put her on a prison ship that's how cold they were they were very cold people uh so put her on a prison ship and uh longevity was six months uh she made it eight uh to give birth to her son their son and then they both uh perished on the ship unfortunately so that was the end too but so she has um a bronze uh star flag uh so does robert and uh for being spies uh on their grave <laughs> which is really cool i have pictures of that also um but i'm gonna leave it at that just because um having such an off day and you know we're at like uh, almost 22 minutes and if you made it this far thanks you know what to do and uh you know, I'm new here, so invite, share. If you know somebody who is interested in um, a little bit of everything, but mostly it'll be, um, you know, about current um, and how the past and uh, the future are intertwining right now. And uh, that's also mind-blowing uh, to me. But um, good uh, intel from uh, Stephen Gardner. Uh, he has a channel on here. And uh, he's, uh, his backdrop is, uh, I've been following him or on his channel now for oh, like almost two years. And um, at first, I'm uh, going to be honest, when I started uh, watching him, I thought he was more left-sided. Uh, he's from Washington. <laughs> Uh, he, um, very much, uh, is a middleman. Uh, he's an American, loves his, uh, country, uh, believes in the constitution. Uh, he's also a financial advisor and, and knows how to invest money greatly, gives good investment tips. Um, cause we all try to help each other here in the patriotic community. Uh, where we go one, we go all. Um, so... That's uh, pretty much really what my uh, channel is about is just like giving you guys uh, just information uh, to help with uh, health, mind, body, and soul, and to uh, have some, uh, I don't know, news breaking information. Let me just put it that way. Uh, be it whatever. Um, I will tell you real quick down here in Florida, which is like, and I always double check when I, I get a, a news notification because I don't, I don't trust the news anymore. I uh, double check and sometimes triple check my information before um, anything is repeated or uh, shared. Um, but uh, an uh, 85-year-old woman... Uh, this was in Fort Pierce, Florida. Um, she was walking her dog right next to uh, a pond, a lake, you know, in the um, in her community. And uh, she, the gator was 10 foot, so it snagged her, uh, unfortunately. I don't know if the dog uh, was taken with. Um, I just know that, uh, it's, they said that she died from a alligator bite. Um, but he did drag her into the 
So prayers go to the family because that's horrific. Um, that was sad. So don't uh, walk your dogs near lakes in Florida. Mm -mm. I haven't walked my dog yet down here she's like 15 pounds <laughs> no, no and i'm only like 102 <laughs> we'd be like one pack snack so uh, with that uh you guys have a good night and peace out